Good morning everyone and welcome to Stupid O'Clock. I've just had to uh, get some mad blue in the yard so hopefully I haven't woke everybody up. And we are in Sunny Hole now, as you can see, not very sunny and very, very early. It's not even uh, seven o'clock yet. We're going in here to load uh, 19 pallets of frozen to go to Malaga and um, I used to load here a lot uh, when I had my own lorry but um, I haven't been for a couple of years so I'll pull up I don't think they start till 7 but I'll pull up and I'll see what they've got to say Down. It's like a little alley, well, I say little, it's big enough to get the lorry down, but it's down the side of the factory, which is um, not the easiest thing to do with this long wheelbase mid, mid lift twin speed lorry, but we'll get there, just a bit of patience. As my boss says, you do adapt to what you're driving, and you just have to. It, it's, I equate driving this lorry with the long wheelbase and the mid lift and the twin steer all those things i equate it to driving a cruise liner because going forward um in a straight line and everything it's brilliant not a problem at all but when you're trying to get into small spaces it's kind of like trying to turn a cruise line around in the Suez canal it's so frustrating because it goes so so slow and trying to adjust it when if you've got a tag axle or a marvellous 4x2, which I would much prefer, um, you can adjust them. You've got um, the manoeuvrability to just change it. But this, it just, this is just so slow at coming round. It just doesn't go until it's ready. And then you just think, oh, for goodness sake, you just have to give yourself, it's like a football pitch to, <laughs> to get it to turn, you know? And in spaces like this, when you just want to adjust it a little bit, you just have to pull forward again, adjust it, and then go back. Whereas if you've got like a 4 by 2 or a tag axle, you can just adjust it um, in, in, in a, such a small amount of space. But never mind, we'll get there. We just need to miss the um, post sticking out, especially with my trailer, because I do like this grey and trailer. It's a big old heavy thing, but it's just and really nice trailer to pull. There we go, we're in. We just need to uh, get it straight. There's a bay behind me. Um, so you're just um, reversing, like I said, down the side of the building. Um, the bay, you'll see the bay in a minute.
you like my new camera mount by the way I, I managed to get the camera mount to go on the side and so you can see what I can see in the mirror so um, I haven't quite got it perfect yet but uh, hopefully I'll uh, get it organised by the end of this trip Amusingly, just along here, you can't see it because of the way I've got the camera, there is a sign that says drivers stop and open slash close your back doors. This is so you know you're in the right place to miss everything, to get the doors opened or shut. See what I mean? You're in the perfect position, so the doors will go underneath that um, lean-to bit and it misses the wall at the side. You're in the perfect position, very clever of them. So that big guy goes and closes the gates in front of you so that nobody can wander in off the road because you're right on the footpath. Uh, just finished getting on here and I'll hand the keys in and then we'll just sit and wait until they come back out again and um, tell me it's all done. So there we go, didn't take long. I think I've been here just about 45 minutes. Uh, big guy's going to go and open the gates. I've sh pulled forward, shut my doors. I've put actually the interior door down because I've got some um, ambient to go on the back and um, got all my paperwork and everything so we can make a move. foreign lad that one and he doesn't really say a lot but he's um he always sort of waves says hello and and that sort of thing i whatever language he speaks i can't speak it either so so but um yeah he's pleasant enough So I'm going to carry on down the road. Like I said, I've got some ambient to pick up um, and it's in a place where I can't film. So I will bring you back later on as I'm getting down the road. Yep, Humber Bridge, very impressive.
Hello, welcome back. Welcome back to the end of the day. It's taken me all day to get that frozen on and um, the ambient on the back. So I'm pulling into the services to get some sleep. So this is Sher Sherwell Valley services just by Oxford on the M40. It's a big parking area, but um, it's not cheap. So you can see all the bays on the right where the lorries are. Now there's four of them, roughly 160. Plus you can see where the lorries park around the outside. Now at the end of tonight, every one of these bays, every single inch of this will be full. So I would say 200, 200 spaces here will be full, 200 lorries. Um, and per night, each vehicle has to pay at least £30 to park. I'll just let that sink in for a minute. That's 200 vehicles at at least £30 per night to park. That's £6,000 a night they make just on parking. And that's, you don't get any security, you don't get any food, you don't get any shower, you just get one parking area. That's all you get. I mean, all service areas are the same. Um, I believe around London it, it costs even more to park, but I don't park there very often. This um, machine you can see me reversing up to, this is a plug-in for my fridge. But if I want to use that, I've got to pay more again. I have got a uh, cable to connect it to my fridge, which makes it quieter, so you're working on electric instead of diesel doesn't bother me but sometimes if the diesel's going low or anything like that I will plug it in but again it costs me more money I have to pay well I don't the company has to pay it um, you have to have an account you plug your fridge in and then you log onto the account and then it gives you a code to start the um, electricity going through which makes it all quieter and everything but again then you're paying a 30 pound parking and you're paying extra to do the plug-in so you know it's just costing you more and more money but these bays here are designed to have the fridges in that contain as a fridge so um, it will all be fridges that are parked by me right i'm going to pay my parking and i'm going to get my head down for a bit i'll bring you back in the morning morning it's very early and we are on the descent down Jubilee Hill to Dover. Dover. What can I say? It's Dover. I can't see how busy it is, but it's never a good idea going through Dover. You get held up. It doesn't matter what happens, you always get held up. Hopefully it's early, so it shouldn't be too bad. Just looking across, there's still there's a fair few down there, look. Let's go and see what's going on. up a bit you won't believe it's not even eight o'clock yet it's like half past seven in the morning you just think i've got a bit of head start on this but oh let's just go and find a line and join it i guess um we're going p and o so all these are going p and o well 
I mean, it's just disheartening, Dover is, because you get all this queue all the time. I mean, most people don't see it until they want to go on holiday. And to us, holiday season just holds us even more. But these lines are so when you get... You, this is going up to passport control. I mean, you look, you watch as I go past here and see how many UK vehicles you'll see here. There's very few. Oh, there's one. There's one on the left. That's a UK vehicle. All these, all foreign. All foreign vehicles. You know, um, well, European, so they shouldn't really be that much of a hold-up when they go through the French passport. Not that the French people ever, ever actually look at it. They just kind of are looking at their phones most of the time and just wave you through. But we'll wait here. Let's just join the queue. We've got to wait until our light at the front there look it will go it open it goes green and the barrier opens presumably all these on my left will go through before i do just um take it in turn follow the queue Five minutes we're through passport control and the daylight's coming that's quite a nice um, sunrise isn't it let's go and see what the queue's like round here then sunrise but oh yay look at the queue oh all that traffic's just queued up around here <laughs> we're F, we are look at all that all in front of us there's what four lanes there and then over onto over onto the right there's another six lanes yay we'll just follow the queue Well, we're around the top bend. Let's see how much longer it takes us. Oh, we're getting there. We've only got the one in front of us now. Yay! Let's go and talk to the person in the kiosk. Thank you. Where are we? 206. Thank you. 
You're not going to believe this, but it's eight o'clock in the morning, just gone. Eight o'clock in the morning, and the next boat that I can get on is at five past twelve. That's, I mean, that, all my paperwork's done, everything's done, but that's how it works. And there's very, very few tourists here, just freight. And what gets me is that you don't hear about any of this in the winter. I mean, it's still January. You only hear about all these hold-ups and everything when it affects passenger services, but you will never hear this in the news or anything like that when it just affects freight. And we have to put up with it all the time. It's just worse in the summer because people want to go on holiday. So we're right down near the end here. What did I say it was? Two oh six. Go right down the end. Here it is. Here. So that's it. We'll just have to wait. But um, I'll get my head down for a bit. result I've managed to squeeze on the back of this one that's it it says uh, 10 30 so I've managed to squeeze on the back of this one just literally squeezed on the back now just wanted to put a bit of info for anybody that's um, never done customs in the driver's lounge or somewhere where the drivers eat somewhere like that by information you'll find a board that looks like this and it's the same board, uh, no matter which company you use, it will look something like this. On that board, you will find your registration number and it will tell you that your green, vert, which is French for green, means that your customs papers and all your documents have cleared. On the other hand, if by your registration number it's showing up orange, it will say Civep or Douane, depending on, Douane is French for customs, depending on who wants to look and if there's a problem with your paperwork or something like that. Yay, and we're here. Welcome to France. See how busy it is, look. I mean, the, the, I was outside because I left the fridge running in and the, all these was absolutely jammed. It's all freight. Um, it's not a freight boat, it's a new boat. I don't even know what it was called now. But um, it's not, it's a new boat, but... Um, and there were some passengers on it, but very, very few. It was... 99% of it was freight.
land it's like wacky races getting off the boat here it, it's just so busy all the time Remember I said to you about the orange, if it goes orange, well just above this, on this sign above your head, I'll slow it down so you can see it, you will see an orange sign, can you see it, you watch above this lorry, there it is, there look, you'll see an orange sign, that's it, and it says Civep or Douane, now if it comes up orange when you're on the boat, you follow that orange sign and all the way around um, Calais it will, you just follow that orange sign now there's no point me trying to give you directions because Calais is like I don't know Spaghetti Junction and um, depending on which uh, link span you come off which ferry you come off um, you'll go a different route but what you have to do is follow the orange sign and that will take you into customs it doesn't matter like I said which boat you come off see the orange sign look it's there and it will just you just follow that orange sign and it will take you into the customs area So if you look carefully here, look, coming up on the right, you'll see it, Zivep, Edouane, your orange sign there, look, and you would have gone up there. If you'd have come up orange on that board on the boat, you would have followed that orange sign up to the right. Now, I'm green, so I'm just going to the port exit. so does it now when you've seen me before coming out this way the way I would do come here I would go to when I was going to Holland and Germany and that I would keep to the left lane and go across that way but I'm going to Spain so I'm going right here over towards Normandy which I'm so I'm following the signs for Boulogne so I'm going over to the right here actually a lovely day isn't it it's cold it is absolutely freezing but it's uh, it's quite a nice day we actually go past the channel tunnel coming out this way can you see it above my head tunnel de la marche however you pronounce it me perfect french you just follow that side look if you're going on the tunnel which is something that you'll never see me do. I've done it twice. It is not natural to be that far underwater, under soil, and still be breathing. Nope, nope, nope. Done it twice, never again. So I'm going to make my way over here. I'll bring you back in a little while. Welcome back and welcome to Rouen. That's an interesting uh, suspension bridge, isn't it? We've uh, caught up with one of Monaghan's finest. I don't know if they were on the same boat, but I did see them at Dover actually. But um, I don't know who it is. But we'll follow them along because there's no overtaking here anyway. Don't come this way very often. 
it's uh, it's quite industrial here but then I think we're on the outskirts so and it's all like I said all roadworks here actually looks like they're building a new road or a bypass or something not quite sure but I bet this is a nightmare when it's busy BM driver is very keen on their indicators but it is actually just a road not a junction but to be sure to be sure as they say at least I know where they're going yeah it looks like they're building some sort of flyover there look big um, concrete structure here yeah definitely looks like a flyover not too bad at this time of day but I bet in the morning or at um, busy times it's a nightmare we are getting a bit of the white stuff here uh, must have been snowing but they did have a lot of snow in Kent over the last few days I wonder if they got the same bit of snow that they they had in Kent I mean, it looks very pretty anyway but it is absolutely freezing the wind the wind is absolutely bitter outside are still out and they're still gritting everywhere and the roads are black so that's a bonus I think it must have been bad at one time because there was a lorry jackknife further back I mean I'm not going to film it because why um, would you film somebody's misfortune and you never know god forbid but it might be me one day or somebody I know so um, I wouldn't want them filming me and I wouldn't want them filming my friends so um, we'll just uh, wish them the best but it does look like it was a bit deep earlier on where the snow plough has gone along. I mean, I'm saying a bit deep, but I guess if you live in Norway or, or Canada or one of them places that like has a, like 10 foot of snow, well then, no, this is just, just a dusting. parked at seas last night and it's a bit chilly this morning it's definitely white out well it's still very early but it's not too white it's just very very dark ah well the snow is back I've gone round Bordeaux and um, what are you doing just that's it, the weather's bad so just pull straight in front of me, well done. Um, but the weather uh, turned worse going round Bordeaux, I didn't record it because I was sort of concentrating on what I was doing. But we're just the other side of Bordeaux going down on the forest road and the traffic stop start, stop start. So the road's black but they follow too close so they end up um, jumping on and off the brakes all the time. The Gritters have been out, the snow players have been out, so there's no need for it if they just took it steadier. The noise, by the way, that the, the windscreen wipers are making is because I've had a chip fixed in the windscreen and it's not quite flat and it catches every time it gets to that angle just there. 
wherever it is, drives me potty. Be interesting to see what it's like in Spain tomorrow. I'm going down here and I'm going to park at uh, Gustet's, get a get a shower, and um, see what happens in the morning. up now so it's not too bad this is the Centre Routiers Castets which is um, down by Bayonne you've seen me video this place before um, so I'm gonna park here it's just a little bit a little bit of white stuff it's just um, uh, uh, just every now and again an old flake but I'm gonna leave this video here I wanted to get in the custom stuff and that and, uh, and Dover as normal but um, hopefully you've enjoyed this one I will put the next stage when I go down into Spain I'll put that on the on the next one which won't be too much of a gap so if you've liked please thumbs up subscribe leave me a comment and I will um, post the next one as soon as I've got it edited thanks for coming along and I'll see you soon take care <laughs>